Hey guys, Ben Labadee here, and I'm with uh, mayoral candidate uh, Darren Caniff, and we're going to have a pretty good conversation. So what we want to do in this, as people uh, kind of come in, is we're just going to have a conversation. I want uh, everybody in Chatham Kent to be more engaged in politics, more engaged in the whole process, and I want you to uh, be able to have access to the candidates and be able to ask them questions so that when you do go to the polls, you can actually uh, make a better, uh, more informed decision with people you like and uh, get to know them. So I'm going to ask him a bunch of questions. I want you to hit the share button. I want you to hit the like button. I want to hear from you. I want you to say hi. I want you guys to engage and ask questions because that's what we're here for, really, Derek. I'm excited about yeah. tonight. So thank you very much for coming by. Um, so let's get this started a little bit as people come in. we got a couple viewers already. Um, where are you from? Well, Why are you here? Well, before we get started, Ben, I w as any good visitor coming to a home right. here, this is your place, yep. you're hosting, so I thought, I need to bring a gift. So, could I, should I bring a bottle of wine, a bottle of booze, maybe a can of V22? Oh, no, no, anybody can bring those <laughs> things. Now, I wanted, what do you get a guy that has everything? Well, I thought, I thought long and hard, and I thought, okay, this right here is what Ben oh, needs. All right. Gonna... Every person needs one of these. Okay, I'm going to open it up. It's not jumping out at you. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, Darren... <laughs> <laughs> Darren can have... You have socks. Yes. You literally have socks. Look, I'm wearing a pair of these too. Oh my God. You got... Any, any campaign needs a pair of socks, don't they? I've never... Well, I'm surprised at your campaign party, but... Darren Caniff socks is my gift. So, but uh, I can tell you that you do not have a pair of those and you never owned one pair of those, have you? I have not. I can hang these up. You can hang them up, yes. <laughs> so I want to start this off and say thing with, with those socks. <laughs> well, thank you for the great <laughs> gift. And hey, Haley, how are you doing? Hey, if you guys are just tuning in, I want to know what part of Chatham Kent you are from. Are you from Wallaceburg? Are you from Thamesville, Ridgetown, Tilbury, Wheatley, uh, wherever? Let us know where you are and say hi, just like Haley did. So let's get started here. Um, hi, Haley. Where are you from? Like, are you from? I'm, I'm born Chatham? and raised in Chatham Kent. Okay. And I did what a lot of people did. I went away to school and said I'm never coming back. It just because there's nothing to do in Chatham Kent. I went away and came back 10 years later and best thing I ever did when yeah. I came back to Chatham Kent. Okay, uh, James, I would wear them. <laughs> you know what? They're mine, my friend, but I think, uh, you know. Hey, we've got a few more pair if you're interested, James. Can, can we, we, do you we, have a couple more? Can we give out a pair at the end of this? Yes, we'd be happy to do that. Tell you what, make sure you guys say hi and hit this like. We're going to select somebody um, at the end of this, and you guys will get a pair of socks, whoever we pick. Uh, hey, Deva, how you doing? James, hello. Um, and Ward 6, a couple people. So uh, what made you, so you've been on council. Been on know? council for four years, and yes. And what made you want, did you think what, you wanted to get some experience on council or did running for mayor come after? Running for mayor came after. When I signed up four years ago, I said I want to make a difference as a councillor. Came in and really learned the ropes. Realized that you that you need that experience. You need to make the connections, you need to understand how things work. Right. So through this, when I started council, I had no aspirations of running for mayor. Maybe in the okay. far depths of my, the back of my mind, I decided, right. I was thinking, maybe maybe run for death someday. As we started getting closer and closer, as I get, gained more experience, as I just matured, I thought this was the thing to do. Right. And, and truly to make a difference. Yes. I, uh, I went to your campaign uh, launch party. I went to Allison Story's campaign launch party, and you you clearly have a lot of people that agree and support you because there was a bunch of people there uh, that I wasn't expecting when I when I expect to go to these things, especially locally in John Kent. I was not thinking there'd be that big of a crowd there. Hey, John, how you doing, man? We had over 400 people show up to that event. It was it was amazing. The best part about it was that when I, I didn't when I showed up, that's all I did was show up. The yeah. team I have around me, we have over 200 volunteers in our campaign. That's what it's all about. That's in order to see and succeed in anything, you need teamwork. You need a lot of people moving in the same direction. So I'm really excited about this campaign. Right. 
that that's a lot of volunteers for a municipal campaign. Yes, and would you need that many? I mean, the, the Chatham Kent is a, a large place. Oh yeah, it, it, there's a lot of ground to cover, uh, and we're going to go right into talking about Chatham Kent being such a large place. Hey Sue, how you doing? Uh, I need a yard sign, please. Uh, I'm sure. You got one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what can you uh, do? You know, being Chatham Kent, being such a large place, we have a lot of people from different areas that kind of still feel a little bit divided. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do as the mayor to kind of get rid of that whole line of division and make everybody feel like everything is one? Well, there's a lot of things. So you, you have to make people feel part of it. And I, I look at municipality as like Canada. Canada has 10 provinces, three territories. They're all different, but together they make one of the best countries in the world. Yeah. And when, when, I, when I look at the municipality, we're 23 communities brought together. I believe that we form one of the best municipalities in Canada. So that's the belief we need to all share. Yeah. So, so starting, if we believe that, if we're proud of the community, we need to start gaining pride. We need to generate things in the community that create pride. We right. need, there, so from that perspective, that's what we need to do is create the pride. One of the things is that it's a simple thing. The mayor has to get out to all the communities. If, if the mayor hasn't been seen in a community for three years, it's hard for the community to feel part of it when yep. their leader is not there. Right. That is one thing I will be doing is getting out when, when I'm successful, I will be getting out to each and every community and making sure they feel part of Chatham Kent. Awesome. Okay, so I have a bunch of questions here and I want to hear more questions from you guys. So we're going to get to yours first. And uh, Tiffany has one. How do you feel about community social housing in Chatham Kent? Now, as a realtor, uh, I get questions every day about rentals and affordable living uh, mm -hmm. from people. Now, what? how do you feel about community social housing in Chatham Kent? We need more of it. That's right. Pretty simple. We've got a long waiting list. We need to to make sure that individuals that want to live in a house or they need to live in a house, everyone yeah. needs to live in a house. That they're. I just put a motion forward about tiny homes. I don't okay. know anybody out there knows what a tiny home is. I like tiny homes. But it's it's a home that's 500 square feet or less. There's, yep. there's no solid definition, but it's a roughly that, and it's an affordable house. So you can get in, and it's a, when you look at it, it's a cute little home. Yep. But it's twenty five, thirty thousand dollars. So. What we're looking at, I put a motion forward to say, let's plan for it. Right now, those tiny homes are not allowed in Chatham Kent. With the bylaws right. and everything, you're not allowed to build those. So I put a motion forward to say, let's look at this, let's plan for them. It's coming, we need them to be here. Yeah. So from a social housing perspective, I want to, I want to have everyone ho housed in Chatham Kent. Yeah. It's pure and simple. That is a basic need everyone need has. Yeah, and I was, uh, I toured the tiny houses uh, development in Detroit actually not too long ago when I actually were. Uh, the United Way has a little tiny house uh, development or idea kind of committee going and uh, these houses are really cool to look at like they're really fun um, and they have everything mm -hmm. and they have that that home ownership ability so yes. that, that's a really big thing for a lot of people so we, we lay that out in the pro part of the prosperity roundtable I, I chair that on a volunteer basis it brings together uh, 60 different organizations they're all looking out for people that are less fortunate and that's one of the big things we're looking at is the tiny homes to create that. The housing is one of the biggest issues that we face. Housing, right. transportation, and daycare. Those are the big three. Yep. Okay, and let's uh, let's move on to uh, transportation. Uh, because, John, I, I heard, I know we got a beach cruiser thing that goes from uh, like a to each beach or whatever from different parts, and that's great. What's uh, your take on how are we gonna make transportation uh, better for everybody, or is it that good right now? I don't know. Well, the transportation, that's the issue, is we have those services, and they're not very well used. I mean, the convenience factor, like even the municipal buses in, in uh, Chatham, right? they're going around and they're inconvenient as far as they, they only run till six o'clock. So if you're working, and you work till seven o'clock, and you had to take a bus, for 45 minutes. Yep. Well, you're walking home or you're taking a cab. Right. That's your only option. I know we at council, we've talked about Uber. Yep. That is certainly an option. And I must declare that uh, my brother owns the cab business in town. So I hope he's not listening when I say that we, we Uber is something that we will be here sooner or later. I know Uber right. isn't part, but that's part of it. Like, or ride sharing. Or ride sharing or something. We yep. need that because we're so divert. Uh, 2,300 square kilometers. It's yeah. a large community. We can't be running people back and forth economically. It would cost a fortune to be running that. So we have to find alternatives to that. 
Absolutely. Okay, I see a lot of people here. Um, let's go right to uh, Sue here. Um, let's see here. I can't, Sue, you, you put too much stuff up there, but I'll try to get to it in, uh, shortly here. Um, if everybody out there, hit that share button, hit that like button. If you do got questions, uh, let's ask. I do want to uh, raise a couple questions about um, the railway. It's in the paper now. People have talked about it, and you guys are selling it. What are you guys doing there? Are looking at the option of selling it again, mm -hmm. or what's going on there? Well, when I came to council, the railroad had already purchased. We were looking at, uh, there was a decision about a year into council that said, should we sell off the rail, the steel? Right. And we just said, we looked at the business case and said, well, if we sell off the rail, the rail is gone forever. Yeah. So we needed to, what the decision was made and looked at, I'll, I'll step aside here, every, we need to run the municipality as a business right. and make business decisions. That's what I did. Based on my background, I looked and said, it would make sense that what we're going to do is invest in this steel. The idea is we wanted to find someone to run that railway. The municipality was never going to run the railway. We wanted to have it so that somebody steps in and buys the railway right. and operates it for economic development purposes. The municipality, they went and did everything they possibly could to find somebody to, to buy it and operate it as a, as right. a rail, as a ra an operating railway, it didn't happen. So now we're in the process of the, basically the four million bucks we got invested in the steel and stuff, we're in the process of going to sell that. Okay. The theory is, is that we're going to sell it for four million bucks and we'll be out of pocket the carrying costs of the net 20 grand a year that was costing us to, to carry it. Now, can we make the great... Uh Ontario Marathon Trail out of that because it is 26.2 miles and I, I'd well, like to see a well, trail. Well, that, that certainly we'll be selling off the rail, the gravel yeah. and the ballast, Right. but the land, we have to keep the land. There's no way we'll ever be able to put that back together again that much. We'd, I'd love to see a trail made out of it. I think the other options are just you sell it off, but yeah. that I think that the overall consensus is we want to keep that and have a trail. So we have a trail, we would love to have trail systems throughout Chatham Kent. So if you want to get from Community A to Community B, there's a trail to get you there. Okay, uh, we're gonna go to, there's a lot of people uh, hitting hello and stuff like that, and that's great. We can't uh, see them all, but uh, Bob Howes, uh, what would you do to try and bring factories and businesses to CK? And basically, um, you know, everybody thinks jobs and, and factories, factories. What can we do or anything to Bring jobs back. I think that's what he's trying well, to say. Well, I guess that there, that's a long answer, and I'll try and really summarize it. So you're looking at bringing jobs. We certainly need jobs. That's the priority. Yep. Jobs bring bring to Chatham Kent. We we need to do our job right in the municipality. We need to pr provide excellent service across the board. So that start it starts with that. Yeah. So is, if we're doing the service right, but we really need to focus on providing and eliminating barriers to success, particularly for well, business, right. people, and individuals. So what, what I mean by that is that if a business wants to expand now, currently there's a lot of issues with inspections and various things like that take six months a year. I've heard a lot of complaints about that. We need to fix that. We need to ensure that when we say eliminate barriers to success, business view Chatham Kent as a partner in their business. Not an investment, not investing financially, but ensuring that we provide the service. If right. we're doing that, people start talking about our community. We need people talking positively about our community. Business owners talking positively. We also, from an economic development perspective, we really need to develop relationships, strong relationships with federal and provincial development offices. Absolutely. That's where we need to be. We need to be on top of their list. When they offer opportunities, they have over 200 people that tour the world looking for opportunities. But yeah. when they get one, we want to think in Chatham Kent. So right. they have to like us. I mean, it's relationship, relationship, relationship. Yep. If they don't like us, that phone's not ringing. If, they, if they're thinking us first and foremost. So those are things we need to do to bring business here. The municipality can't directly do it. We can't give free property taxes. We can't do things. But there's other creative things we, we can do. Yeah, awesome. Okay, we got Randy. This is going to be a tough one. Uh, I think it is evident that the execution of infrastructure projects in CK is poor. Now, uh, Randy, I can't see your uh, examples because of the way this is set up, but uh, a lot of people do uh, share this belief, uh, myself included, that a lot of the times the execution of things takes way too long or it just keeps on going. 
Uh, Are, in, in, in like an example, like the bridge you're referring to, the Fifth Street Bridge the, is a great example. Uh, the bridge is a, gr a really good example because it affected so many people. Um, Sam's Percolator, I was just yeah, right so, there. Um, uh, even the yoga studio around there. Well, no, that would, it, the delay was uh, certainly, that was not nothing that we wanted to see. Obviously, right. it, I've been to Sam's quite a few times and yes, their business was hurt from, from cutting off there. But I'll give you that as an example. We, 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 got, we went through an RFP, and we got the, a reputable person, a reputable company to come do that. Mm -hmm. What happened is they ran into problems. Right. So they were paying us $2,000 a day for the delay over seven months. So it cost the, their, the construction company over $300,000 they had to pay to us. Wow. So it was completely outside the municipal experience that that happened. They had torn, the, the bridge was taken down Immediately afterwards, they started running into labor problems. So then I, I looked and say, I heard a lot of people complaining. So then you go over and we're, we're, we're redesigning Grand Ave. So it's, that's all taken out. Yeah. So that created issues, but it was never imagined when the timing of those things was planned that the bridge was going to be there eight months. The bridge was supposed to be wide open at that point. Yeah. So, uh, so, there's, uh, we all, so those are issues that were identified, in, but certainly there's always room for improvement. No matter how close you are to being doing, being excellent or perfect, yep. you're not perfect. So right across the board, we're doing a number of things. We have an infrastructure group. So what we've done is formed a number of individuals from the community to come in and say, look at what we're doing and say, how can we do it better? And I'm, I'm sitting on this committee and it's amazing the amount of creative ideas that when you get a bunch of people together, particularly a diverse group of people or engineers right. or individuals, we have a long list of things that will help improve that. Awesome. Um, here's a good question, BJ Griffiths. Where did that $300,000 go? Where does it go? It goes back into the infrastructure money. So okay. so instead of the project costing X dollars, it costs X minus 300000 it will go into infrastructure. So we'll be able to fix some more roads or do something else with it. Good stuff, good stuff. Hey guys, I know there's over uh, 40 people here. We just hit the 50 mark not too long ago, which I think is a record for me. So if you could hit that share button, make sure you say hi. Let us know where you are, what ward you uh, will be voting in. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, make sure to ask them. Uh, next, we're going to move on. Uh, again, this is a, an idea I love, uh, and it's not everybody loving it, but a sports complex. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking triple pad, indoor soccer, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you stand on uh, a sports uh, complex, a multi-sports complex for, for Chatham Kent? We need one. That's a, it's a really simple answer. We need one for a lot of reasons that you, the, the arenas we have now are an embarrassment. I've talked to how many people that play hockey. They, when people come from out of town, it sets, it's an image. They right. come and say, really? Chatham Kent's 100,000 people. I've been to communities for 5,000 people and the, the facilities are better. Yeah. So, so many reasons we, to attract youth and retain youth. When we want young families coming to the community, we want them to move here, and they come and look at a, a memorial arena that's the 1940s version. Yep. It becomes embarrassing in the community, and it, it, it's not attracting people. So we need right. to do that. We need to have a, a, an indoor sports complex, and I've been working with that for the last few years. I'm very hopeful that's going to come to fruition soon as well indoor soccer fields, soccer fields, yeah. so those things, and it, but it's a collaboration of people. It's a, it, that we, we need those, period. That's, it's a, right. an entry-level part of the game. Hey, Stacy Rabanski, how you doing? Jeremy, how you doing? Um, again, thanks for uh, stopping in, everybody, and uh, engaging. We still got a bunch of questions we're going to go through here. Um, and uh, we had one question uh, that came in previous was, how could you lower property taxes? I mean, our taxes are a little high. Uh, we do have a, a large area to cover, uh, but somebody else had a question, so let's uh, see what well, your answer is. Well, lower property, uh, we went back earlier talking about being efficient. If yeah. we're delivering our services efficiently and effectively, if we're doing what we need to do properly to attract business, yeah. to attract individuals to the community, which I'll talk about some ideas that I have for that later. Perfect. But if we're doing those things, taxes naturally come down. If we get more efficient, when someone retires, we look and say, you know what? We don't have to have eight people doing this. We only need seven because we've developed processes that are more efficient. We've done a number of things that make us more efficient, right. but we have a bigger tax base. Yeah. Big problem, we've lost 7,000 people over the last 10 yes. years. Yeah. So we have 7,000 less people paying taxes. We still have the same infrastructure. We still have the same amount of roads and bridges, all those things. So as we start attracting people to this community and we do things right, 
taxes will naturally come down. Awesome. Okay, we got a couple one here. Um, let's go. A lot of people saying hi. Hey Tim. Hi Ben. In our next mayor, I think he's supporting you there. Uh, Pat Risha. Hello from Patricia Sylvain from Ward Four. Um, let's see here. Let's go with uh, Fred Smith. What? Are, what are your thoughts on using a portion of the budget to be used exclusive, uh, exclusively to beautify our municipality? Yeah. That, that is a great, uh, I love that idea. That's one of many things I'd love to see. Uh, we need to empower the people to do that. There's hundreds of people out there that love doing that. We don't need to go hire a whole bunch of people in the municipality to do it. Right. We need to empower the individuals in our community. So, okay. so if we if we could if we could make a small investment there, that would turn into a huge investment, encouraging people to do that. So we need to work specifically whether we hire a coordinator. We had one before; they were taken out from budget cuts. But I look at that and saying no, because that one individual empowered so many more people to get out there and beautify the community. Right. So the the key here is for our community moving forward is we need public private partnerships. The municipality can't do it all. We have 104,000 people. We need to empower them to do that. This is a great example. There's thousands of people that love gardening, and how do we yes. how do we put a bit of money to get people going in that direction? Absolutely. Because I, I, a great example, I was in Wheatley a few weeks back, and I came out and I was talking to some individuals. I look over in Municipal Park, and I look over in these this older couple. There, one's cutting the grass and one's doing flowers. Yeah. And I said. What's with this? And they said, well, this is a couple. They decided that the municipal park needed, the grass needed cutting and they needed to fix up the flowers. So they're doing it completely <laughs> on their own. Yeah. That was amazing. That That is what Chatham Kent's all about. Yeah. I, I can't imagine ever being in Toronto and having going yeah. to the park and having some people deciding to cut the grass right. and do that. It was amazing. I went over and talked to them. They were, uh, the, the gentleman was 80 something. The uh, I would She wasn't gonna say what her age was and I wasn't gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing. Um, we did have a question here from Yvonne, is, uh, and we're going back a couple seconds, and if you guys see me scrolling, I'm just uh, trying to read everything here, uh, and he said, is the Navistar property even for sale? Uh, and I just and that's talking about the sports complex, and it has been in the paper, so do you know if that property is even for sale? Well, uh, Navistar still owns it, so I've heard people saying oh, the municipality owns it, somebody else, no, Navistar has owned it for all these years. Right. So certainly, they would... If for the right offer, they would be selling it. Right. I, but I mean, there's as most people would know, the, the big concern with that is the environmental issues. The, the, right. So you acquire that thing. The second you touch that thing, it the, the property, you're exposing yourself to those environmental risks. Absolutely. So it's certainly for sale, and that's one thing we really need to move forward with. Is we need to redevelop that. Every time some I drive by it or anybody drives by it, they think think back of the Roaring Nineties when Navistar was up right. and booming and they had 2,000 people there. We had lots of jobs in Chatham-Kent. It's, it's a sore point. So we need to move on from that. We need to redevelop that property. Awesome. Um, okay, so we got a couple of people. I uh, love the idea of public-private partnerships from Quentin Solomon. Um, let's see here, Jonathan North. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan. Uh, let's see here, Walt uh, with a la large last name. Would you encourage rezoning empty industrial areas into efficient and affordable senior apartment complexes? Uh, here there are a few areas in CK for seniors who still want to downsize and live independently. So, yeah. Would Certainly, you... that's part of it. We need to look at how do, how do we repurpose the land that we have. That's the beauty is there's so many, there's so many ideas out there. We right. need to look at it and promote the best idea. So when we have a, a, an empty industrial, I'd like to put industrial back on it because we have lots of other areas that we can develop commercial properties and, and properties. Certainly going back to the early issue, we need affordable housing. And that's where, that's what you're referring to there. Well, I'll put it, I want to put up affordable housing wherever it makes sense. Yeah. It, it was industrial land or anywhere else. Um, somebody again asking a couple times I haven't seen it here. Uh, where would you put the sports complex if you could, if you had to pick a spot right now? If I could pick the perfect spot, it, I would like it at Navistar property, but the, the, the likelihood of that is low. I mean, you want to put it public in, in, in a fairly public area. Look at London, what London did with theirs. They yep. put it right downtown. So yes. I, but, but there's not likely enough room downtown Chatham to put it. Right. So, You'd have to be looking probably, you know, you need 15 acres, 10 to 15 acres for it. It'd have to be a, a, a greenfield site somewhere, probably 
outside the city, just outside uh, Chatham, but right. would, would be centered to the municipality. Okay. Um, let's see here. How do you think you can change the narrative of citizens on po uh, positively promoting Chatham Kent? And I think this is more like a thing uh, with pretty much every municipality has a group of people that are kind of a little bit negative about Chatham Kent. How can uh, you change that narrative well, into uh, you know making uh, Chatham Kent well, this, uh, great? This, this, uh, thanks for the question. Because this is a softball right over the plate, and I'm swinging hard at this one. We uh, a group of people back three years ago we got together and said asked that exact same question how can we make Chatham Kent more positive yeah. so we did a brainstorm came with all these ideas boil it down and, and most people out there hopefully are familiar with positivity day yeah so we've created that we've been doing a lot of positive things in the community but we're really highlighting all the positive things you really have a choice as a, an individual whether it's whether you look at something in a positive way or negative way we right. all make choices we need to move the meter for people in Chatham Kent deciding more often to look at something positive. When you when you look at this pen, you can say I'd like this pen for some other reason or I don't like it, but you've chosen one way or the other to look at good or bad. Absolutely. So thus the saying glass half full or half empty. What do you see? Do you see the water or do you see the empty space? Right. That we need this through this whole movement. We've done a lot of stuff to create that, and there's a movement moving forward on that. Now, are you going to be able to hook me up with Captain Positive for uh, uh, a Facebook yes. Live interview? In fact, you today, got the hookups. In fact, today I made a few calls, a few things. We are going to have Captain Positive sitting in this seat, talking about exactly that issue of how do we make Chatham Camp more positive? Because we've got a lot of ideas. We got a lot of things planned for the next pot, the twelve days of positivity. Right. One of the fun things we're doing is we're giving a ten thousand dollar cash giveaway on. We're at the Capitol Theater on September 13th. We're gonna, you'll qualify to the balcony seats. You will qualify to get one of those balcony seats, and one of those 445 people will win 10,000. Wow. 5,000 cash, 5,000 travel voucher coming from Main Street Credit Union. Am I allowed to promote? Go ahead. Okay. If Main you're giving away $10,000 uh, yes. on here, yeah. You, Main you Street promote. Credit Union and uh, Valingas Travel. Awesome. But I, I, if I'm promoting here, I can't forget about our other, our other spot, Tech Savvy has stepped up big time. We're calling it the 12 days, tech savvy 12 days of positivity. Wow. They, they're a firm believer. We got Tim Hortons. This, this is a, we have to do this plug. Since I mentioned one, I have to mention them all. Go ahead. We got Tim Hortons, we got Apollo Property Management. Big stepping up, big the downtown BIA yep. stepping up. So want to thank those, but go to positivitydayck.com you'll see all the wonderful things, the 12 days of positivity, all the fantastic things we got planned. Awesome. Now, uh, Thanks for that softball uh, question, by the way. Now, uh, we're not giving the $10,000 away uh, on this, <laughs> but we are giving a, a pair of Darren Caniff actual socks uh, at the end of this to one of the people who commented or liked or uh, shared this uh, at the end of it. So, uh, Jonathan North, how you doing, man? Uh, I am 28 years old with, three, uh, with a three and one year old. What would you bring to CK for the younger generation. Well, that's, we, we've touched on some of that. Certainly that is critical for us moving forward. Our population is aging, we're losing people. We need to bring young families back. We talked about infrastructure, we talked about arenas and the sports complex, that's a piece of it. We need, but for the young people, we need technology. Right. We, we, 21st century technology brought in there. One of the pieces is, is high speed internet. Yes, we need that. That's that's a basic. That's like having lights and water. We need that type of stuff. But we need to bring the infrastructure. We need to have young people heard. We right. need to have them have a say in the community. Awesome. I'm part of a hockey league. There's about 100 of us. Would you ever bring a road hockey court in Chatham? Because Dresden, Tilbury, and Richtown have one, but Chatham does not. I would certainly love to bring one. I mean, we need to expand those things. We need to get people physically active. Sports is so important. But we need the facilities across the board. That that's one of the pieces that we need to have in place to make our our community proud. Right. When we talk about bringing our whole community together, when we look at this, when we look at a new sports complex, when we look at this, when we look at all these things, we say, "Wow, what an amazing place we live in." That's what we want to say. That's when you start feeling part of the community. Awesome. Uh, hi, Bianca. Tech savvy is the best. They are the best. Hey, Val. How are you, Sarah Weaver? Great to see the community come together for a good cause. Uh, Jenny Teal, <laughs> I want the socks. Hey, you, you got a lot of competition today, Jenny, because uh, there's a lot of people uh, commenting. Um, hello from London, Darren, you have my support. Keep up the great work. In my opinion, you're the best option for Chad Kent. 
Uh, I don't know if you can vote in Chatham Kent, but uh, from London. Um, well, thank you for that. Yeah. Polaroid, I want the socks. Everybody wants the socks. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> they are mine, Jenny, back off. So we're having a little fun with this, guys, and this is great. We're at 48 people. I want you to hit that uh, share button. I want you to hit the like button. I want you to ask questions and engage uh, a little bit more here. Um, again, let's go with... Um, uh, I know a lot of people that are uh, construction jobs, say drywall or concrete. They're looking for more talented workers, okay? Mm -hmm. They're running out of workers. Um, they need more people. And, you know, with the drop of 7,000 people over a period of time, a lot of our uh, workforce talent is gone. Mm -hmm. What can we do to kind of draw them back in and help out these people, um, get more people working for them? Yes. Well, that's, that's part of the, the, we've talked a lot about that as okay. far as the infrastructure. We need to have those things. We need to do things right here in Chatham. Okay? We need to eliminate the barriers. A couple of things that you haven't talked about yet is from a cultural perspective. We need to eliminate the barriers to success from a culture. We need to improve on, on that line. I've seen several times where people have had, they want to do some event, they want to close a road, they want to do something like that, and they get this inundated with paperwork. Yeah. We just ran into this yesterday. I, I, I see this and see all that. The event actually was canceled because of all of the administration that was forced. Right. We need to a step on the opposite we need to be partners with people we need to empower them like the time with the flowers and getting out and beautifying yep we need to empower people to do events we need more various things like that we need to bring back the festival of nations oh, oh we yes. it, it is a no-brainer to bring that back whatever the municipality has to do from a, from to bring that back to support things like Canada Day. We should not have to run out and an anonymous donor step up at the last minute so yeah. we have fireworks. We as a municipality need to put resources into that so that every year we know there's fireworks going on across Chatham Kent. Absolutely. So it's those it's those cultural things. But the as far as bringing jobs, the other thing we need to do, and this is, a, this is kind of one of those uh, festival giving type ideas. Like, uh, out, bodacious out there, but we need a, a, an over-the-top welcome wagon, and I'll, I'll, I'll define okay. what that is. What we want, what I want to do, is when someone comes to this community, we are going to roll out the red carpet beyond any expectation of anybody. So when they come in, they're going to within three months, they're going to feel so part of this community. They're right. going to feel so welcomed. They're going to be talking to all their friends that where they came from and say. I can't believe what Chatham Kent just did for me. Yeah. It's a simple thing we can do. It's not going to cost a lot of money. And again, going back to the public-private partnerships, it's not going to be the municipality running this. There's service clubs out there we can talk to to bring that in. There's businesses. There's a whole bunch of things. But I want it to be, I want the so real estate community. The real estate community. I want CBC coming here and saying, wow, Chatham Kent, what are you doing with this welcome wagon? This is amazing. Yeah. That, so it's over and above, so we can talk about it in a positive manner, like going back to that positivity thing. Yeah. So those are a couple things, because we need to attract people, yes, there's, there's, we need more skilled people here, but we need to give them reasons to come back, come to Chatham Camp. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, Pam, how you doing as mayor? I love your positive thoughts, so I'm talking about How would you promote the community to support local uh, business rather than out of town, uh, out of core country? Um, I'm guessing that you mean how do we support like from within, if I'm reading this right, rather than uh, going to other countries and trying to, even though I believe we have to do all that yes. at one time, but how do you promote with, from within? Kind of yes, going back to we need to eliminate barriers to success. We need small business in Chatham Kent is what generates 80 plus percent of the jobs in Chatham Kent. We need to support them. I I want it so every business in Chatham Kent says we're a partner. So we need to eliminate the going back. We eliminate those barriers when they when we go out and help them. It, a simple thing instead of calling them a building inspector, let's call them a building facilitator. Right. It's because they're there to facilitate making this making whatever they're doing successful. We have rules and regulations. The province tells us things to do, but we need to be we partners. Absolutely. So, so, but we need to help small business. That's what the small business group is about. We've just agreed to move small, the economic development group with into a, a separate building, but we want that to be a one-stop shopping center for small business. Awesome. So anybody, also anybody out there that is thinking of expanding, changing their business, 
see economic development. There's lots of grant opportunities out there. there the municipality, if you want to fix up your property, there's options for that. We want to, you got to see them because they can help. So, oh, okay. so don't ever think that you, you they don't want to listen. They're there to help. Hey, Sharon. Um, Sharon's got a question. Uh, what makes you the best mayor for Chumpkin? I'm going to wrap up with that one, uh, Sharon, where I grill him on why we should vote for him uh, or why anybody should vote for him. Uh, so how about uh, the community try and raise money? Our community is great at raising money. We do have a, a great community for raising well, money we are, for things. This community is top notch. Uh, I know we did the United Way campaign back in 2006. Out of the 180 United Ways across Chatham County, we were eight on a per capita basis wow. as far as giving. And and based on our income levels, when you look that our overall average income is a, is a lot lower than Toronto, but yet we were out competing places like Toronto as far as our per capita giving. So we live in an amazing giving place. Awesome. I, one other example of that is we're talking about pay it forward. Everybody, I'm, I'm sure that most of you at some point or another either been in a drive through somewhere and paid it forward or been yep. the, Recept, receive that. I, I, a good friend of mine owns a lot of owned a lot of restaurants in the, the U.S. He said not once did it ever happen. He says it is a regular occurrence here. Yes. So, but it, that's part of our fabric of our community. We need to have. We need to wow. to encourage that. Awesome. Uh, Sue, Welcome Wagon used to be here in 1975 when I moved here. Love being made to feel welcome. Hallelujah. That yeah. is exactly what we want to have. Okay. A couple of people have uh, said this one. Uh, Sean Lloyd, hey, how you doing, buddy? Uh, what are your thoughts on a 401 exit at Queen Street? A couple of people have now asked that question. Well, <laughs> certainly back in the 1960s or late 50s, whenever it was put in, it should have been put in then. Right. Chatham Kent would have looked a lot different. Uh, unfortunately, now that the province doesn't support it all, so we're looking at 30 plus million dollars to put that in. That's just to put the exit in. And then we have to look at the infrastructure. Once you come down Queen Street, you're going to go into crazy corners. We have to redevelop that. Uh, you know, it, I would like to see that happen, but realistically, right now, financially, we can't afford. There's so many other things we need to put into our community, like a sports complex, all Absolutely. those different things. Those are very important. Certainly, that would be ni a nice to have, but I, financially, I can't see it happening. If the province steps up and says, I'll pay for it, it's a whole other issue. Oh, yeah. Uh, workforce development, education, let our youth know it is okay to be in the trades youth apprenticeship. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, workforce, uh, definitely. Uh, let's see here. Gee. Wow, there's a lot of you guys. Hey, uh, well, when you see me approach the screen, I'm actually scrolling through because there's <laughs> a bunch of uh, people here. So I'm going to hit them with a question from Allison Bed Bedfoth. Uh How would you go about promoting arts and culture in Chatham, Kent? Yes, that, that goes back to the empowering people that we need to, there's a lot of things we need on arts and culture because that is another key to keeping people here, is making sure that the culture is alive and well. We talked about the festivals, we talked about those things. Whether so much for the Capitol Theatre, I've heard people say the Capitol Theatre is too expensive to have an event. Well, should we consider subsidizing a little bit more from the municipality perspective? Should we? And there's a bit, we, need to, we need a business case for this. Mm -hmm. But to say, lower it so we can get more shows going on. The more shows that are happening here, I hear so many times there's nothing happening in Chatham right. Kent. I mean, we've all heard that. If you look hard enough, there is, but what would love to see festivals and things going across Chatham Kent. I know there's been weekends that I went out and there's five or six, seven things happening. Right. Like you get Cherry Fest happening this weekend, a lot of great events happening there. But we need to encourage that. Both financially, we need to eliminate barriers and, and allow other people to do those events. Like, I'd love to see a festival come in here, like maybe like the Beatles Festival or something. Yep. Having something like that. You've know, got an, an Elvis Festival going on somewhere else. Let's have some fun with it. Let's encourage that. We need to roll up the red carpet for those events. Awesome. Uh, Paul Roy, I had a small business on King Street, but no one came downtown. How will you get people to shop downtown? And I'm thinking we're talking Chatham, Kent, or Chatham uh, specifically on that one. Yes, so the downtowns are, a great downtown is a sign of a healthy community. Certainly there's been some development in the Chatham downtown. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about there. We need to develop all downtowns. Yeah. We because they all arrive. We got some beautiful downtowns right across Chatham Kent. The downtown Chatham one has been under construction, and and as most not most everyone knows, you know the the issue with the the condo complex that right. slowed things down. The bridge, the the, yes. you, you, the sidewalks, those things. 
in the next little while it's going to be repaved down there. We have the sidewalks, the bridge. Hopefully, over in a short period of time, we're going to have the con or the condo complex done. You're going to have eventually when it's sold out, you're going to have 180 people living there. Right. We need to get people down there. That's going to, that's a start. I mean, to look at other ideas like if we if we put the arena downtown, which is there's long all sorts of yeah. it's it's a long shot, but you get people going down there. Anything we can get the businesses locating down there to get people down there is the hub. That's what we need to get people shop. But also downtowns, we need to have something that stands out. Right. That people when people come from out of town or go downtown, they look and say, "That's the wow factor." Right. One of the ideas that I had was we put up some sort of monument, i.e., like a combine, but a really cool one. Yep. But we have is how it's lit is we have half antique cars on posts with the lights coming down on them. So what it's going to do is it's going to create something that when they come to the downtown, they say, put people from London, Windsor, wherever, they remember that. And yeah. people will come down to that. We need to encourage more uh, lounges, more cafes, those type of things. I would love to see uh, where you go down there, you have five, six, seven cafes because it feeds on itself. I would love to see people downtown and I'd love to close every weekend downtown. We okay. back? Okay, we are back. I think we had a little pause. Hopefully you guys are still with us. Um, Karen Kirkwood White, yes, a little more flexibility to enhance the community economic development. Yes. Uh, and Karen, I think, is a Ward 6 candidate. Um, Chelsea, Nicole, how you doing, Sean? Yvonne, uh, Deb, uh, Tilbury has a great art Yes, they, they, they do. Uh, that's uh, Deb Moisiak. Uh, that's somebody that can help promote the area. She's a realtor uh, in the Tilbury area in Chatham. Um, food Truck Festival. Wow, there's a lot of... A lot of stuff going on here. Uh, need more info on the cheering? Uh, you might have lost me. You need more info on the cheering cross exit. James wants to know. Anything more you want to add? I well, think you covered the, it pretty good. The, yeah, we've looked at studies and stuff, and uh, there wouldn't be the will of the council to do that. We we just have too many other needs right now. It's a nice to have. Certainly would be, but it's not going to happen anytime soon if the province doesn't fund it. Awesome, um, Veronica. Hey Veronica, uh, would love to see the boats downtown again yes. and the waterway utilized. I haven't seen that for since the Festival of Nations when I was a kid. Yes. So what's happened there is the there was legislation came down from a higher government that, that cut the speed limit to about three kilometers an hour. Okay. Because of erosion down the river, and it basically instantaneously killed the traffic coming down there because right. it takes now three hours to get to Chatham from the, the lake. Three hours back, okay. so it single-handedly shut down most of the boat traffic. Really? Because we've got yeah. So, you know, we've been lobbying though that government to increase the speed limit. I mean, there's environmental issues, erosion issues along there. We need to get that because certainly if we can get that up. We I would love to see three deep boats in downtown in, along that way, right. bringing economic development to down or bringing people down there. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. People love the food truck idea. I love that too. Okay. Hey guys, we're at 52 people. I haven't had 53, pe 53 people. Uh, hit the share button. Hit the like button. Again, uh, for anybody who's commented and anybody's going to comment, uh, we're going to almost wrap this up shortly. You could win a pair of these Darren McCannif <laughs> socks. Um, One of the few, the proud. The very few. <laughs> uh, I got them as a gift, but he's going to get I'm keeping these ones. <laughs> you can't have these ones, but you'll be giving one away at, at the end of this. And we'll so how are we going to pick the person anyway? Well, here's what we're going to do. Um, I don't know. Somebody tell us how to pick them. I'm usually, uh, I put a bunch of names in a hat or in numbers and pull them out. All after, right. Hey, uh, you're the host here. You're, you're telling so, us what to do uh, here. And that's what we'll do. We'll see uh, how that, look at all the likes and loves for the socks. <laughs> yeah. If you gave everybody uh, socks, uh, that would be great. Um, personally, I would not appreciate uh, 401 exit. It, Several it, 401 Ontario do not have access from the yes, forward to city. That's center. the issue there as well, is that it impacts everybody down Queen Street. Yeah, that's where Stacy lives so, on Queen. Yeah. So, so uh, Stacy, don't worry, it, it will not be happening uh, unless the province miraculously changes its mind about spending 30 million. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, let's create a mini San Antonio downtown river walk, uh, Chatham Kent style. <laughs> Big wash. Um, hey, they're brand new socks. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, how can we fight illegal drug problems? How can the municipality? Uh, I don't seems to be ignored. Resources available. Well, and, Is that and that's like? that's that's an interesting question. I maybe okay. spend one minute to address that. Is that yes? That's a, certainly a problem we have. The B and E's, the drug problems. But what the issue is, is that when they're arrested, 
the legal system doesn't really we have people with the rap sheet they've been rip, arrested 50 times they know the, the system they go do their whatever two days three days they're released again so it's just it's systematic and a lot of them are on drugs and they're addicted and that's how they, they're feeding their habit. Right. So it, the legal system is what the police would love to be able to lock them up longer. The legal system doesn't allow that. So, okay. so that's what the real issue is, is that w when the police do get them, they, typically there's a short list of individuals that they can go down and say, yes, this is, one of, this is your problem, but they legally can't do a lot much about it. Okay, uh, from Joe Sales, Darren, how can Chatham Kent become more inclusive for people who have disabilities? It seems like there are individuals who have dis difficulties getting across the city. I would love to see more inclusiveness for that. Yes, I would love to see more inclusiveness. That, that's the key to moving forward. Um, let's see here. Agribiz, let's talk, uh, I haven't heard you talk about the agriculture business. Oh, well that... Let's talk about it. They, let's oh, talk, hold yeah. on, can I stop you right there? My mom, say hello to my mom, Margo Lavity. Margo, how are you? Yeah, she always says she's my <laughs> number one fan. All right, <laughs> now let's get back to the agriculture business. Yes, agriculture, this is a $3 billion business in Chatham, Kent. It is the, one of the top businesses. $3 billion? $3 billion it generates in B. Chatham, Kent. Yeah, it's a B, a big B. Yeah. And certainly that is one of the biggest businesses and I support that. I couldn't support it more. It's a hundred uh, that we need to support that from a manufacturing perspective. We talked about that. How do we attract processing plants? Those things, those are natural fits with ag business. Because you look around at, at a lot of jobs are created in Chatham Canada that we need to foster that. We need to thank our farmers. Right. That's why on Positivity Day, we have one of our days is Ag Day. Where we sell it, we thank our farmers. Awesome. Uh, ben, hope you have Darren back on here because he has my vote 100%. Hopefully Darren will come back. It's going to be a busy election uh, season, but hopefully we can bring him back later on uh, closer to uh, uh, the election day. I would love um, to come back, Ben. All right. And, and he brings gifts, so that's always good. So everybody else who wants to come on here, uh, you got a lot to live up to with these socks. Um, here's something I want to know while we're waiting for other people. Uh, what about your dad, Brian? Would you say, oh, my dad doesn't have... Uh, uh, Facebook yeah, doing an awesome job guys uh, from Kirk Hooker um, okay so at the end of four years let's say you you win the mayor seat mm -hmm. what does four years from now look like to you four years from now okay but if when I draft out what I see four years from now we have a sports complex we have those facilities we have more people we were we have gained five or six thousand people that is the true sign of do people want to live here or not is that there more people here? Right. That four years ago, that's what I said. The number one objective of mine was there's going to be more people living in Chatham Kent when we started at the end when we started. Yeah, and do you have a target number for that a of people? Up uh, for two, four years from yeah. now, I would love to see it back up to the 108, 110,000. So we're, that would be getting back to six, seven thousand people we lost. We need a, a booming economy. We have a support mechanism for the less fortunate in our community. We had that. We have no homeless. That's a target. I would like to right. see no homeless people in Chatham Kent. Yeah. So those are just a few pieces. I, there's so many things I'd love to see. A thriving culture in Chatham right. Kent. Where we have festivals. We have things. We have empowered people that are that have taken pride in their community and they're doing more things there. Um, hey Gary, uh, everybody wants the socks. Norbert, Ted, uh, brave looking socks. Ted Dalios, uh, hashtag free socks. Uh, where's the billboard I asked to put on my property from Jordan Dell? So it, there was a question <laughs> earlier I saw pop up there. It was talking about uh, social. Yes, Tiffany asked this. Okay. And I and I agree with you 100. percent I missed that in my answer. That yes, it, there we need to su support those individuals as well. So I missed that whole piece of the answer. That is one piece is in, is dealing with right. the police perspective. But the bigger issue is how do we deal with the addiction? How do we build those support networks? How do we get, eliminate the drugs in the first place? Certainly, there's no one uh, magic bullets can do that. Right. But we need to. That's going back to the, how we envision four years from now is we have that support network that can deal with those problems awesome. better than what they were doing now. Good catch, because I've been scrolling through these but, and I missed. Yeah, that so one. we we probably missed another thirty it, questions. Yeah, <laughs> well, there's a lot of people. Um, so let's uh, we're gonna wrap this up in a few minutes here, guys. So if you got any questions, DC 2018, uh, where can I get a Darren Yard sign? I want a big one. Um, you can plug that. Uh, where can they get signs or contact information? Yes, from if, you go, if you go to Darren uh, DarrenCanup.com and just 
put in your address there to send us an email and we'll make sure you get one. You're going to have to start a sock factory. To, uh, yes, we'll be happy to do that too. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, abstract marketing downtown above friends. Okay. So, um, yeah, anything. What's your greatest accomplishment so far, you think? Well, you know, you've done a lot of stuff. I've done a lot of stuff. And I look and say, uh, first and foremost, Virtually all the stuff I've done and been very successful with, it's been a team effort. It's been a group. It's, it's, this is not an individual thing. I look and say, like the festival of giving is one thing that I'm very proud of. First year we started, this was 17 years ago we started this. So we got a great group of people together, did a fundraiser, and we raised 13000 in a church basement. Everyone celebrated and said, that's a wonderful thing. We said, we, we weren't going to do the second, and finally we decided to. And, and I went out to everybody and said, okay, we're going to raise tw double what we did last year. And the, react, the look on people's faces in the committee said, really, we're not, we can't do that. Sure enough, we, raised, we doubled that. Mm -hmm. And we sat down the next year and said, we're going to double again. We doubled it again. We, we, the ten, by the 10th year, Mike Grail and I, when we, we, did, we raised $365,000 from a team effort. That is what I want to apply to Chatham Kent. There's a lot of people that say we can't do things. Yep. I believe we can do things. I can, we can set those bodacious goals. Like we talked about the welcome wagon. That is a simple one to achieve. To go out there and just have one amazing event for people to come in. For, so, but there's so many things that we can do, but we have to have the belief we can do them. So when I look at festival giving, it's a prime example of just leadership yep. and bringing people together. We, we created so many great ideas over those 10 years. So, and the event still goes on today and raises over a quarter million dollars every year. Awesome. Uh, that's, that's a pretty, pretty good one. And I, I always believe, uh, you know, when I do my other programs, uh, you know, with fitness and anything, it's all about mindset and believing something. And the more you believe it, the more you take action towards it. Uh, we got one from Walt. We're going to wrap up quickly here. Uh, my final question, how many hours do you think one should spend weekly as mayor in Chatham? Ken, that's a good question. Well, I know I would probably be live and breathe it. That's what, that's what I do is either I do something, I don't do it or I do something over the top. That's yeah. my personality. So, I mean, should you, in the regular jobs, 40 hours, I'd probably be living 80 hours a week. That's yeah. my wife. When I do something, I'm living it. If I'm not in the office, I'm living it. I'm thinking about it. I'm those type of things. Meeting with people, I love being social. Yep. So uh, being mayor, I would say a lot of hours a week. Awesome. Uh, everybody's going nuts about these socks. <laughs> um, <laughs> the team approach is a terrific message. It, Hi, so John. Van Kestern said hi there. So th there's an idea right there to create some of the local company. We can manufacture socks here. What do you think? Well, this uh, we got somebody already putting in their uh, resume. Sock factory will create jobs. Take my resume. Uh, <laughs> I will buy the socks. <laughs> they don't even want them for free anymore. They want to buy them. Excellent. Um, <laughs> well, I think I, they are for sale. They are so, for sale? So if anyone wants to buy socks. <laughs> okay, so we got... Uh, Darren is such a great fundraiser. He's a golden with charities uh, and being and, accessible. And I, yes, that certainly is the case. You want accessible. You want to be able to have access to the mayor. I, I find that everyone out here, everyone on the the fifty six people that are on there right now, which every, is a lot of people to, to it, have for a lot. Everybody has great ideas, yeah. and the only way those great ideas get translated is having accessibility to people that can act those. So I encourage great ideas. That's what's going to make our community move forward. Is the individuals. Imagine the, the ideas of 104,000 people live here. Virtually everyone has an idea that can improve this community. Yeah. How do we empower those? All those people to get those ideas. That's what we need to do. So right. yes, we need to be accessible. To the mayor, the, the CAO, the, the administration, Chatham Kent need to be empowered to hear those ideas and enact on them. Now, would you be interested, like when you when you if you become mayor, if you get voted in? Would you take on something like uh, this from your office and be more accessible this way, answer questions say month, once a month or something? Yes. I know I, people have done it on the radio and stuff, but with the technology we have and the way that these people can engage with you, and I'm talking about you guys because this is this is a really good tool for everybody to be able to engage with you. Like, no, I, I love this use? idea because we, we've gotten some ideas already through this. Right. And if we were asking people specifically for ideas, Imagine how many ideas we had circulating through here. Absolutely. And, that, and you bring all the people together and the ideas seem like they're going to be possible. With the population increasing again in Chatham Kent, what is the path to reigning in residential property tax rates down to levels of neighboring municipalities? 
Well, that's what we talked about. Is we're yeah. doing things right. We can we can lower taxes overall. So what we need to do things right and attract people. Right. The more people are building houses, <clears throat> sorry, the more people are building houses, the more people are paying property taxes, the less we have to pay overall. So we can lower that rate. <clears throat> right. Okay, we got uh, one more here. Darren has raised over three million for local charities. Wow, uh, Darren, is that correct? <clears throat> yes. Three million bucks. That's what the festival of giving alone has raised over wow. the, the years that it's been running. Awesome. Positive D has to start at the city level. It can be contagious. Hopefully that is the case. Hey, Dwayne, I uh, already have my sign. He already has your sign. Okay, guys, any other questions? I'm going to ask him uh, one more question. I have a bunch here that I, I, I like to ask. Uh, what's your What's your favorite beer? I know, is it the V22? It is the V20. It has to be the V22. <laughs> do, do, does everyone know out there what V22 is? You better tell them uh, the story. I've had the V22 from Sons of Kent. Uh, it was an amazing beer. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, give them uh, a I'll do a quick story on V22 at the Festival of Giving last year. A good friend of mine, Chris Shaw, and I, we purchased this right to go brew, brew a beer at Sons of Kent. So Sons of Kent donated this, so they brewed a thousand liters of the beer. So we went in for on a, on a Sunday morning, we spent seven hours brewing this beer, and we sat down with the brewmaster, and he walked us through and said, what kind of beer do you want? We ended up, with, and we called it V22. So V22 means vote October 22nd. So it's sold out now out there, all the cakes are gone, but I happened, I, I bought up all of the cases. <laughs> uh, so I've got 30 cases of beer, but it, it, it is great tasting beer. I've right. many people say it's one of the best beers they've brewed. Yeah, so he's got 30 cases of beer and I got socks. Yes, well. Right? I, 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 tell, I tell you, I could probably sell these socks for 30 cases of yeah. beer at this point. Yes, well, I, I was either gonna bring you 30 cases of beer or a pair of socks, so. <laughs> Awesome. Um, okay, so again, we're gonna pick somebody um, at the end. We're gonna just post it after, if that's cool. Sure. Uh, we'll yeah. Post after who the winner of some socks are. So after. How about the person that put the most posts on there? there add them up, and whoever put the most rate as of right now, they get the socks. What do you think? As of right now, at this minute. Okay. So yeah. at this minute, whoever's put the most comments in wins well, the socks. They, they got a, a cut. They got two more minutes because I'm asking you one okay. more question. All so right, they, so you guys got this is their opportunity to put win some, some socks. <laughs> you do have to comment. You can uh, do a hand signal or something that will work. Um, but uh, back to the other person Sharon asked, and a lot of people, is they want to hear it from you. Why vote for you? What message can you give them to encourage them to, to vote for you and convince them you're the real deal? Okay, well, I guess we talk a lot of things about leadership that's what we need is we need to lead leadership and empowerment for people we need the the mayor needs to be the biggest cheerleader possible and encourage people to change culture i will i fully want to see culture change in chatham kent po piece of uh, in case is positivity day that's changing the culture of chatham kent i want to be in, as mayor i want to go in as a full-time basis to do that because that's where we're going to make the biggest change empowering people, getting people. If we can take our 104,000 people and move them together, and I believe we can, based on what I've done historically, I want to apply that same logic as I talked about the festival, giving other things to the municipality, because together, we the sky is the limit. Awesome. Okay, guys, well, we're gonna wrap it up now. Uh, if you're ever watching what? this uh, on the replay, you can so, share this so people can watch sorry, it. Sorry, I, I, I just want to answer the, uh, Daniel just asked the question, Daniel why Rousseau. Darren? Why Darren what? over Allison? So, you know, if you're out there debating saying, well, which person you should vote for, I, I just encourage you to look at resumes. You're hiring the, the CEO of the municipality of the corporation of Chatham Kent. So you're a CEO, each and every one of you has a vote to hire the CEO. Any, in any job that I've ever applied for, you know, the first thing you look for is experience. So that's what I, I encourage you to look, take the resumes, hold them up and look at, compare them and say, the experience, I've, the, the stuff I've been doing in the community the last 20 years, the business experience I have. I've got a business degree from Laurier, I got a CPA. So I, I apply business logic, I do those things. So the history of everything, that's what I'm bringing to the table. But as when, you, when you're looking at all, any of the candidates, look at the experience and what they bring to the table and the potential they brought, bring to the table. Awesome. We're at 59 people. Can somebody else come in so we can get to say we got There we are, 60. Woohoo! Glad you were on the men. Good to see you back to group power. The way you go do yes. your workout? Yes, group power. Tom, Tom's part of my Eating Sober program. He just nice. started running seven yes. and doing five Ks. Like so you can wear those socks. Uh, you can wear those socks for your, your next workout. Yes, I'm gonna wear these uh, in my next live workout, guys. Okay, <laughs> so um, hey guys, 
thank everybody for, for coming in. Thank you for uh, spending the time with us and getting to know Darren. And I'll be doing this with other candidates. Uh, we're going to get to doing more council candidates now. Uh, we've interviewed uh, Allison Story, the mayor, uh, the current mayor, Randy Hope, is welcome to come on as well. I do want to get um, to know more of the Ward 6 candidates for everybody. And uh, for uh, later, you can hit the uh, share button because this is going to be on replay for people to watch after and they can come back and see all the comments, see the questions and see the engagement. And Darren, we'll, uh, we got two things. You, uh, i got to get you to get me uh, Captain Positive. Yes. Po when do you want him on? Uh, do you want to set a date right now? We can see if we can get him here. Let's see if we can do Monday. Would Monday work for him? Monday. Or well, Tuesday? Tuesday? Monday or Tuesday. I will talk, I'll talk to his people and see if we can get him here Monday or Tuesday. Let's get next him here because that would be great. And um, again, uh, anything you want to say at the end of this? No, I'm excited about this opportunity. In, in order for me to, to be your mayor, I need you to vote for me. So I encourage you, October 22nd, vote for Canada. Thank you so much for, for listening and tuning in. It's awesome. We have 60 people tonight. 60 in. people right there. That's my record. Okay, so uh, next person has to step it up and get us uh, next one. Okay. Hi, Colleen. Jerseys. Everybody wants something. Okay. <laughs> we'll be, uh, and Darren's going to announce uh, who the winner is uh, right after here. And uh, hey, guys, thank you very much. Again, hit that uh, share button so people can see this after because it will be available. And uh, look forward to seeing <laughs> sure, you guys. Get your votes in there. Yeah, get the votes in. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you guys soon and uh, we'll have them back on uh, later.